We love our woodworkers here on Tennessee Crossroads, and the subject of our first story is no exception. Judy Gale Roberts is one of the leading experts in her field of art. Laura Faber spent the day with her in her shop, and well, once you see her work, you'll understand why she's on the show. Section by section, this seagull is pieced together like a puzzle. Every piece, and there are dozens, has its place. It's an art form with a fancy name, one that Judy Gale Roberts didn't even know when she first started creating these mosaic masterpieces. So we sent pictures to the National Woodcarvers Association and asked, what do you, is there a name for this? Have you seen this before? And so we pronounced it intarsia. I mean, it's like a mosaic. It's all glued to a wooden support. It's just using different colors of wood to create the picture. Judy is one of the world's leading intarsia artists. In fact, she's the only woman to have been inducted into the Woodworkers Hall of Fame for intarsia. It was for teaching intarsia and just bringing it, reintroducing intarsia. She's world famous. She's got customers and different countries all over and Diana Copper is one of Judy's students and friends. I was hooked from the first day and Judy is just so patient and so sweet and sharing everything. She doesn't keep any secrets. Everything she does she will explain it in detail. From her mountaintop studio and gallery in Seymour, Tennessee, Judy has been creating wood mosaics for 35 years. Her parents were both artists, and Judy's creativity was nurtured by her dad in particular. They painted and sculpted with clay, ceramics, even steel. But wood is where Judy found her artistic calling. And the wood has itself has so much to it that when, when you start sanding it, the grains come alive and it just follows the contours and it, that is what's kept my interest in it. Every piece of wood is so different. It's a living object. The process is painstakingly slow and it starts with a pattern. With my dad, I became the pattern maker and I would do the old fashioned grid method where he would do the sketch. Judy sells patterns for intarsia pieces, thousands of them. Most of her work is by commission, and many customers send a photograph of what they want her to recreate in wood. This particular project is for a customer that, that has his favorite dog, Lola. My first thing is I take this picture um, and put it in my computer and then draw, use Adobe Illustrator to draw, kind of get the idea of the pattern. And then I remove the picture and then I start isolating. I start to develop the pattern and figure out what I can and can't cut. This is cut like a wedge or a cookie from a tree. You can see the growth pattern, but it's perfect for, uh, for a dog or whatever that has kind of a model grayish color. Now this is a piece of walnut that has such a cool grain pattern. This is some, um, they call it ambrosia maple. And what that is, is it's been a bug has attacked it and wherever the bug has made their hole, it changes the color. Choosing the wood is an important part of the art. I use it all, but my favorite probably is where it's spalted wood, where it's wood that started to rot and it gets different colors and grains. And um, there's so much opportunity to use that because you're really trying to paint with the wood so you're trying to find the grains that will work with whatever it is that you're making. Except for the blue that you see in an American flag, Judy doesn't paint any of her pieces. All of the colors that you see comes from the actual wood. For instance, this is yellow heart, red heart, the green comes from a poplar, dark is walnut, the white from an aspen, and the piece that I'm holding here, this is purple heart. After choosing the wood, it's prepped and the pieces are glued to the pattern. One by one, each individual piece is cut out. Marianne Vandervoort is her scroller. I am lining my blade up right now to what we call a lead-in line before we get to the, to the um, actual pattern. And I kind of creep along. I let the blade cut the wood. I don't push the wood into the blade. The pieces are shaped, sanded, and sculpted. Three coats of finish are applied, and finally they're assembled and glued onto a common backing. 
Nothing about this is fast. And it's emotional when Judy lets them go. Like this piece, created for the old friend senior dog sanctuary in Mount Juliet. I felt like I knew each dog because I had I have to do so much research. How many actual pieces are in that? I'm thinking it's about 4,500 pieces. And how long did that take? Well, from the pattern design to the completion in about two years. Other famous pieces include this, created for NASA and the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. Judy holds the record for the largest intarsia work of art, a 20-foot long piece for Dow Chemical. And you might recognize this sun shown on a network morning show. At the end of every day, Judy can't quite believe this is her life, that she's made a living from her passion and has a goal for the future. I walk around this building and say, God, I can't believe I get to do this for a living. <laughs> My parents struggled so hard trying to support a family that that I feel so fortunate that, that I've got a crew behind me too that works with me and, and helps this, keep this whole thing going.